Hey, this is Steve and Tiffany at a different chick farm and orchard, and we are going to show you some tomato trellising we are doing in our greenhouse right now. This is a little bit overdue. Should have already been done, but uh, everything else that's going on has kind of left us neglecting the tomatoes a little bit. So we're simply using tomato clips. These are the heavy duty ones. We first year we bought these clear plastic ones. They're cheaper, uh, smaller, lighter duty. They break and you're lucky to get two seasons out of them. Um, these do a much better job. We're going to catch it under a limb so that it supports it. We'll try to get two on each one and we'll go through and sucker while we're going. We don't want no suckers, especially in the greenhouse. Um, we need to keep the foliage to a minimum to promote growth and I want to drop back here and get this one at the bottom because there's nowhere at the top that's going to support it. Like so. And you can see at the bottom where we've already been removing the excess foliage, uh, everything below the fruit and actually this week these two limbs will probably go also. Um, everything below our first set of fruit because they're good for the growth of the plant but at this point they're just foliage that's going to promote disease and and pick up insects off the ground move down here and do another one we primarily grow heirloom varieties almost completely as a matter of fact what we prefer. You can save the seeds from them obviously. And they will grow true to form most of the time on an heirloom. So we'll get the same tomato back. This one here is a beauty king and then we just finished up an afternoon delight and the little guy back there uh, isn't quite keeping up with the rest. There you'll see a project tomato of ours. It's a, a natural cross that has been extremely dwarfing and we're just experimenting with it. This is the second generation with the exact same results. Um, technically third generation counting the original one that sprung up. So we're just experimenting, seeing what we can get and how that works out. So a few more years, maybe we'll have something pretty cool there. Down here we've got a bed that we've already cleaned out the greens from winter. I say we, Tiffany's done cleaned out the greens from winter. Um, and so now what we're going to go back in, this bed hasn't been freshened up in a couple of years. So we're going to freshen this bed up before we put our tomatoes in it. Um, we'll get us another, you can see I've already got strings hung here. We're going to get five more tomato plants in here. Um, these will, even though it's almost time for um, gardening, gardening outside in the garden, Weather's still a little bit cool, and matter of fact, we've got a 30 degree night coming probably tonight. So this will give us the ability to get more of a head start. But here we have manure droppings from our rabbits. Um, we, uh, we use a lot of our fresh compost. The rabbits you can use fresh. Uh, our chicken compost has to be obviously composted first. Um, so it has to have time to uh, break down and then we Tiffany does some uh, fresh composting also but the rabbit can be used fresh and so we'll take it spread that out over the bed and then we have a bag of Daddy Pete's composted cow manure this isn't necessary but this will ensure the bed is in good shape for a couple of years to come. So we will put the cow manure on here. It's a compost, not just cow manure. As it continues to break down, it'll continue to feed the nutrients in the bed. And we will spread that out just a little bit. Got a root in there somehow.
Swiss chard leftovers. Ah. <laughs> we had Swiss chard growing in this bed. Um, plants were actually two years old. So we took them outside, uh, decided to see if we could get them to grow that good outdoors. And so far, they're actually um, acclimating to the climate quite well. Um, and we'll see how long we can keep a Swiss chard plant alive because these are, like I said, three years old so far. We decided they didn't need the greenhouse no more. You see here, you'll see some oak leaves that were added to the bed. And as they break down, they will continue to feed. Uh, most leaves, but especially oak leaves, are very high in nutrients. Here we're going to use Daddy Pete's raised bed mix. It's excellent just by itself, but we push these beds pretty hard form and produce so the cow manure and the rabbit compost comes in very handy and the daddy peach products we sell them um, but they I was using them before we even sold them they are a organic product um, we try to stay organic and natural around here because we prefer that and we don't want to consume chemicals either As you can see, a couple of bags goes a long ways. I thought that I might need a third bag and I brought another bag of raised bed mix, but was not needed. We will use this in another project. You can see here, this is a trellis system that we built last year. If the sun don't glare so much on you, this is on a three quarter inch uh, electrical conduit uh, EMP and uh, standard tomato twine. I prefer the nylon over the cloth, it doesn't spread disease as much, um, it's, it stays cleaner, it dries out quicker. Um, but tomato clips you can see we got a lot of tomatoes already up and coming we got several beef steaks up and rolling there uh, multiple varieties um, they are just uh, performing very well very well Right here, Tiffany, if you'll show them. Even though I've already took all the uh, suckers off, a lot of times, especially on your heirlooms, they like to continue to try. So just simply roll and pinch that off. A knife isn't necessary. Right here is a prime example of a larger one that's tried to make its way, and it's just simple as breaking it off. And uh, that will promote the upward growth of this plant and help it to concentrate on fruiting instead of spreading so it can put its energy into these flower buds. All right. Give me what we plant. Have you decided? Uh, no, I haven't even planted it out yet. Well, let's put a few varieties in here. Let's do maybe two varieties. We have got uh, a red beefsteak, Mr. Stripey, got some get stuff that's probably not worthy of the greenhouse space, chocolate stripes, hillbilly potato leaf, got some old Germans, 
black semen, uh, vintage wine, uh, some more chocolate stripes. So, what we got here? German we, pink. Got German pink and millionaire and granny Cantrell. It's a millionaire's definitely a good choice. Let's go with this mixed pot. And maybe some chocolate stripes. Let's go with this mixed pot. We've got one here just leftovers from when we transplanted. We got millionaire and an old German and a granny Cantrell. So all of them were excellent choices. So we'll plant those. We got five spaces to work with. So there's three. And you said chocolate stripes, Tiffany? I think chocolate stripes. We got chocolate stripes in. What's this one back here? complicated you can use tools you can use your hands when you're working in a raised bed type setup um, in the ground sometimes tools are a must now what we're doing here as you can see with these we planted our tomatoes towards the back of the bed and we are leaning them forward as they grow but that gives us the ability to get them away from the wall so they dry out and perform better but it also gives us the ability to plant some crops underneath. You'll see these beets are a little bit wilted right now, but it's because they didn't get watered today. So uh, they've got to get watered before the sun goes down. We've been busy. So, but we got beets and carrots behind Tiffany planted. Um, and that gives us the ability to get, the beets will be out of here shortly. The beets probably have about another 30 days and they're going to be gone. And then the carrots can continue to grow under the tomatoes. The root crops complement the, uh, nitrogen loving tomato plants the tomatoes love to suck nitrogen out of the soil and the root root crops don't need nitrogen so they complement each other um only thing better would be to have some basil and uh, marigolds planted in here with them but unfortunately the greenhouse space is a little bit too valuable to uh plant marigolds and basil uh inside now we definitely will have marigolds planted um outside and um We'll probably plan after this weather straightens up, we'll give you a tour of some of our tomato plants that we're planting in pots. And we're doing that just uh, to show our, our viewers and our customers that it can be done. We get That's the question we get the most per year is what tomatoes can I grow in a pot? And what peppers can I grow in a pot? Well, the truth of the matter is any of them. So well, that's another video. We'll get to that maybe next week um, and show you what we got going on there. So anyway, let's get started. So just come right back here. We'll dig us a hole. We'll start with this millionaire. And we are currently using just simple <laughs> popsicle sticks. We ordered these in bulk. Um, they, they work quite well. So just gently squeeze our uh, tray and then push up my finger and let it kind of fall out into my hand. When we plant our tomatoes, these ain't quite as tall as what I'd normally like for them to be, but when we plant them, I like to plant at least 30%, if not 50% of the tomato under the ground. That helps with several things. It helps give the tomato a chance to uh, build a good root system, and it helps the tomato uh, be able to be more drought tolerant because the roots go deeper. But if you look how deep I've got this in the ground, you know, there's the ball of my fist completely under the ground. And so that's, that's what we're going to be working with here. And when we get done planting these, we will water them in real good. Generally, I don't like to water tomatoes at night, but with these young ones, it'll be fine because it's some be back out tomorrow and take care of the problem. But we'll water them in because if you don't, the dirt will actually, where it's kind of dry, it's just barely damp, it'll actually, um, reverse osmosis will occur, and it will actually pull the water out of the tomato plant. And of course, we don't want that, so. Our next one's gonna go here. Probably wondering how I know where I wanna put them. 
Well, the answer to that is I've already measured overhead with the strings. And put your markers in front of your plants. Because if you put them behind them, you'll never find them once the foliage starts to grow. And I'm going to do the same thing here again. With this old German, we're going to squeeze it to break it. Take our finger and push it up and just let it fall in our hand. Of course, we got a volunteer. Pinch these first leaves off. They're not true leaves. They're not needed. We'll go ahead and pinch them off. We don't know foliage under the ground. And then we'll just lightly press that in and mark it. Same thing here. We're going to plant our next one. This is a good project to get your kids involved in too. The younger they are, the more they enjoy it. Sometimes old ones enjoy it too. But we'll just gently push our soil back in. Obviously, remember that's got our cow manure in it, composted cow manure, and uh, bark fines is in the cow manure also. And it's got our uh, rabbit compost that comes straight from our rabbitry here on the farm. We got a small rabbitry. And of course, the raised bed mix is in there also, the Daddy Pete's raised bed mix. Okay, now we're going to do two chocolate stripes. I am actually going to pull these bottom two leaves off this chocolate stripe because they're going to be in my way of planting to the depth that I want. You don't want your leaves on the ground. It promotes disease. Pull one extra leaf off there, and then of course the two fake leaves. Our last hole. Stick our plant in. Cover it. Press it in just a little bit. And there we go. We are planted. We'll start to see some pretty heavy growth from these guys over the next two weeks. Um, Tiffany, I'll have to come back in and put some labels on those two down there because I didn't have a spare marker to put in. But, and then as these guys grow and there's a need, we will pull these over and do tomato clips to get them where they go. But those tomato plants, barring a where they're inside and, and the wind is extremely minimal, they won't need to be tied off for two to four weeks, depending upon their growth. But uh, two to four weeks before we're going to do any tying. If you're outside, sometimes the wind and the rain storms come into play and you got to do it a little quicker. But those have a long ways to go. And, uh, Tiffany, would you like to let them see I know it's a whole other video, but you'd like to let them see some of your cucumbers over here and your trellising, at least a light view of how you're trellising these English cucumbers, maybe? We've got uh, a Telegraph English cucumber here. Uh, it's actually the only one at the moment we're growing in the greenhouse. Uh, we have got some specific greenhouse cucumbers. These actually um, do not have to be pollinated. pollinated. Uh, which is why we chose to put them in the greenhouse. But they, uh, if you're one of our CSA customers, uh, you have actually possibly already received some in your boxes. As the season progresses, we'll have more of these and hopefully soon we'll start to be able to put these outside. And that's it for today.